Hello, and welcome to another x 11 video. Uh, we're going to fly in a... Uh, first off, I figure since I've done the side-by-side -side comparison of the SSG 747 version 2 with version 1, now we might as well try a proper uh, long-haul flight. So we're going to fly a fictional flight from Atlanta over to Munich, mostly because uh, Nimbus released version 2 of Atlanta, and it looks pretty good overall, although that jetway is inside that covering, which is a little weird. Uh, but for the most part, it looks great. We're using Traffic Global for the weather. Uh, active Sky... Or traffic Global for the traffic, rather. Uh, we're using Active Sky for the weather and Active Sky Cloud Textures, and we're running uh, default shaders, so no X-Vision or, or anything of that nature, just uh, default lighting. Or at least I had X-Vision installed and then I restored to uh, the default shaders and whatnot. So in theory, it's default, but who knows if there might be something lingering around in there. Um, no Lua plugins, no other fancy stuff. Just as uh, fairly close to vanilla as we can get it, except for scenery and whatnot. Uh, anyways, the plane is running. Uh, the APU is running. It's aligned or very close to being aligned. It's loaded and fueled. Uh, we need to hop in the flight deck and finish up our programming. We haven't touched the FMC beyond uh, position in it, so we'll go ahead and hop in the flight deck. Let's see, Nimbus brought their signs from O'Hare, their information panels, to uh, Atlanta version 2, so you can, there is a plug-in where you can fill in the information for these panels, and that is quite nice. Uh, anyways, let's see. Going by the checklist here, that's before start, so we'll do that later. Uh, we'll switch to APU power, and we can lose that GPU. Go ahead and tell passengers that they should probably think about sitting down. Uh, root. We are going to... Uh, firstly, we're going to back out of this and we're going to use the pop-up because my understanding is that the pop-up actually is more reliable than uh, the 3D representation, but I could be completely wrong and I might have made that up. Anyway, we're KATL to Munich, company route, exec, and it will now take it a minute and load that file which is downloaded from Simbrief, and currently that is the only way that I know of because there's a uh, there's a issue with airways where sometimes it will just switch to direct instead of leaving the airway in there, but that gives you your uh, it gives you your airways, although it does seem that the export just kind of m skipped the NAT track the uh, North Atlantic track. Let's refer to Simbrief. And that track should start at a place called Elsir. I don't see here at all. Nantucket, then Brad, then Elsier it should be. And then it should be, let's see, North Five zero west zero five zero. Will it take that? No. Wrong. Else here first. Okay, we're just going to erase this and start over. Else here goes in after Brad. Wrong. Brand back up here. 
is Brad. Brad is... Uh, I don't even know. That's fine. Yeah, this might actually be easier on the uh, root page. Yeah, just go direct across the ocean. That seems like a good choice. Where did that... Where did that go? It didn't even... I don't know what I'm doing here. Let's see. We'll get this right. This FMC is, is not good. It is better than version 1, perhaps. Well, it's definitely better than version 1. But it's still not, you know, it's not an actual... It's not a replica of the Boeing FMC. And if you've used any other aircraft with Boeing FMCs, you'll see that pretty much right off the bat. Why does that... Why does that insist on going in where it does? Hmm, not really sure how to fix this. There's something stupid I'm missing, possibly, although I kind of doubt it. Let's, uh, let's try this down here, see if it goes any better for us, which it may very well not. can't just go direct all the way across the North Atlantic. I mean, I suppose you could, but it seemed like it'd burn a whole lot of extra fuel. And this bouncing back to the uh, first page is very obnoxious. which it wasn't doing over here. The R key is not working. There it goes. Put that in there. And that's not, that's not what it said it was going to do. Ah, we're getting somewhere. I feel like that still leaves something to be desired. Let's try putting in North 50, West 050 now. We put north 50, west 050. This is going to delay our flight. This nonsense. Ah, 
There we go. And then it's north 51, west 40. Okay, that's... I'll deal with that myself later for the purposes of us. No, that doesn't do anybody any good. All right, let's let's go back down here. Let's pretend like we're going to tolerate this and fix it. North 50, west 050. Goes in after else here. We're going to put it there. That's gone in properly. What? What is... What is this route doing? This doesn't make any sense. Alright, tell you what we're going to do. We're going to say menu, initialize, yes. Let's try loading... FMS plan. The old, the good old X Plane 10 format. Now let's see. That's put in the SID itself. well as everything else which gives me more than I bargained for but it does bring the NAT track in so we'll take it Root, activate and execute and we will depart off of 27 right and it will be the or two departure Yes, with the spa transition. Let's see if this goes in cleanly. No, more or less. Probably didn't. There we go. Now that's more or less fixed. I'm going to delete this. Bring this up a little bit because that will probably be a top of climb or some other random point from Simbrief. And that is probably our top of descent. And what follows is a SID, or a star rather. So let's get rid of that other random point. Execute that. So there's definitely some bugs in this FMC that need to be worked out. But at least I think we can get to a... Oh man, that is so obnoxious that it just... Anytime you touch a key, it just loses what page it was on. I'm just going to go ahead and delete... The star as it currently exists. Like, why? Oh, why does it go back all the way to the first page when you hit delete? Why would it do that? Execute that, and then we'll. Grab EDDM and put it on top there. All right, there we go. Now we have a working route for lateral navigation, which took far more work than it should have. The UFMC export should have the NAT track in it and should do just fine. And if it doesn't, I should have a much less difficult time fixing it. But there you go. Like I said, we are loaded up. I believe that I told Simbrief I wanted a cost index of 250 because I want to get to Munich today, not uh, any longer than I have to. 
our cruise flight level will be 330 and our reserves are going to be 12 tons. Which means we have quite a bit less fuel on board than the FMC thinks that we should. And uh, just since that is probably based on what they expected to use, we're going to take the extra fuel while we're sitting here. Uh, let's see, going back to the root page, we can put in DLH987, which is our fictional flight number. Let's go back to the uh, perfinite page. Wait on the fuel loading to complete. While we wait, I'm going to say let's uh, let's go ahead and close all the doors. Let's take all the uh, fuel pumps. Not sure what that caution was for. Probably something important. All of the fuel pumps that matter. Let's see, are we going to have any center tank fuel? Really? We are. So we'll bring uh, those pumps on as well. Nav lights are on, APs on, bleeds on, packs on, so forth and so on. We can pressurize hydraulics, which we will do pump four to ox. We can actually, if we go to the hydraulic display down here, see pressure build in that system. We go pump one to aux, and again see pressure building. Which I'm not sure if this screen, if these screens really properly worked on V1 or not, but they're there. They do things in V2, and we'll go to auto on two. Wait for that pressure light to extinguish. And then we'll go to auto on three. Which, according to the FCOM, is where you need to put those switches. And I don't know what I'm doing, so I'm going to stick with what SSG told me in their manual. Since it's their airplane. Go ahead and set 33,000 feet in the MCP. And we'll take a look at the checklist and see where we stand. Alright, that is all fine and dandy. If we hit step size, we can adjust our step size to 2,000 feet, which we will do. And let's see, let's take an assumed D rate of 44 degrees. Nope. How about 55 degrees? 64 degrees. Is anything actually going to give us... No. Nothing is going to give us an actual D-rate there for some reason. I'll do flap 20 for takeoff. That will give us our V-speeds. Which seem rather high. And... Let's see, I think... That's got us pretty well ready for uh, pushback, more or less. Ah, oh, checklist. Let's just do it since it's here. And this system did work in V1, but I never ever looked at it. Closed and locked. Sure, sure it's closed and locked. Passenger signs are on. V2 in the MCP, which would be 181. Runway headings in there, altitudes in there. We're good. Go ahead and set trim, which is uh, 8.3. See, so we've got the handy dandy display right here, so we can set it thanks to the display on the ECAS. That's done. Taxi and takeoff braking, sure. And beacon both. Let's do that. All right, that's the before start list completed. And let's see. 
Next is before taxi, so we've got a minute. Let's see, better pushback. Pre-planned pushback. Let's, uh, oh, we've got dueling 757s, thanks to Traffic Global. So what we're actually going to do is push back over here so we don't have to run anybody over. The last time I tried to make this video, I just backed into a 757 and called it good. Parking brake off and then back on. And let's call the tug. Alright, I'm going to wait on the tow to get connected and then we'll uh, come back and push back and do our engine start. Alright, the tug is connected. We'll go ahead and release the brakes. It's worth noting that better pushback does seem to have some issues. Take all the fuel valves. And we'll lose the packs. I don't know if we need to turn those off or not, but we'll go ahead and lose them just so that I feel like we've done it. And we'll start... I believe you start 4-1, then 2-3. I don't know. Anyways, we will see auto start. For some reason, we have early fuel on engine 1, and I think we're going to have it on engine 2 as well. Engine 3 and 4 don't do that. And I don't... I don't know what's going on there. see the auto start notification which is new in v2 as a matter of fact this system's logic has been improved in version 2 uh, as far as the engine start and whatnot goes the starter cut out on four so we'll start number three and number two and I think if we look down real quick we're gonna see early fuel Early fuel on 3 and 4, maybe early fuel. I don't know when it should go in, but it seems like it went in early. To me. Uh, but, either way, it's fine. Uh, if you read the uh, manual for the plane, you will note that SSG specifically says their goal with the systems is to make something that is uh, similar to a 747, but that it is not overly complicated. They want anybody to be able to hop in this, get it running, get it flying with uh, minimal reading, which uh, they they do certainly deliver on that side of things. Arm the auto throttle and auto brakes RTO. And we've got good starts on th two and three. So good starts on all engines. We'll take flap 20. And then when we get unhooked here, we'll look at the uh, flight control side of things. I guess we can go ahead and look at it. There's rudder full right, rudder full left. Full left, full forward, full right, and full back. go and we see the droop in the ailerons and the flapperons since the flaps are out looks like those 757s have cleared up finally and there goes the 737 and now you'll notice we've slowed down the tug got really quiet I find that if you tap the uh, tow brakes around that time it seems to uh, take forever to finish if you don't tap the brakes at some point during that operation. There goes another departing Southwest jet. Thanks to Traffic Global, which uh, has its fair share of ridiculous things that it does, but I still rather like it.
waiting on the tow to disconnect. We'll do our before taxi checklist. Any ice is required? Sure. Recall checked. Don't see anything in recall, so we're good there. Flight controls are checked. Alright, toes disconnected. All of that is done. Take taxi and turn off lights. And we'll take a weather radar. We'll go ahead and get underway. We'll turn the APU off, which I forgot to do. Apparently it does not like where we are on the ground. Maybe it thinks we're on grass. I don't see any approaching ground traffic, although Traffic Global does like to race around airports as seen by that 757 which is probably going to cut us off would be my guess yep. we'll let the 757 do his thing go on sir get out of the way please And we're just going to follow this 757 over to 27 right. Well, that's, uh, that's an interesting uh, version of separation there on that traffic. As in, uh, that's the uh, 50 feet of separation, or the 30 feet of separation, which is below the limits, as I recall. Not sure about this terrain mesh. May have a problem with how I installed the scenery. But I don't think that I do. Incessant middle marker beeping, which is not going to stop. There's the incessant inner marker beeping, which is not going to stop. Wish there was a good way to turn that down. But I don't know that there is. We're going to take the full length off of 27 right, so we'll turn right here. And yes, the beeping stopped for a moment, but it's only going to start again soon. Take the strobe and wing lights and say that we're leaving and everyone else can get out of the way. 757 better not be sneaking up on me. I'll run him over. I'll do it. I believe since we're taking the full length we'll have some uh, approach lights to run over because that's always uh, a good feature of high quality scenery. Uh, you know, you pay money for a piece of scenery and you're really happy with how most of it looks and then uh, they use uh, approach lights that stick up out of a uh, taxiway. Which we're just going to run over. because. That's not our fault, and it's not our problem. And here we are on 27 right. 
roughly lined up. We'll apply some power. Engines are stable. We'll apply takeoff power. And we'll hit the Toga shortcut. Deal with more beeping. We'll say the engine sounds themselves are much improved over V1. Uh, most of the other sounds are still awful, as you can kind of hear some of the callouts and whatnot. They're not particularly good. But it is what it is. We're uh, coming up on the end of the runway here. Rotate. Banking left for some reason. Bring the gear up. We'll gently go up to uh, 15 degrees, nose up. We'll stick with runway heading for now. Bring that nose back down a bit. And with that done, we'll hand it over to the autopilot. And that's us, off out of Atlanta. Alright, top of descent is not crazy far away, so I figured that we would try to get into another fight with the FMC. Let's see. <clears throat> Just look at some charts here. Our arrival is going to be the North 3A arrival. And you'll see that it has limited our uh, runway selection. So let's uh, let's not choose an approach, which is not how this should work, I think, based on my, albeit limited, understanding of uh, Boeing FMCs. They typically require you to select an approach and then select a runway. Uh, instead, we are going to select ILS 8 right and then we will choose the Anor 3A arrival with the Anor transition. And if I go and look at the chart for 
that. Uh, we're pausing because of where we are in relation to top of descent. Um, let's see. Approaches. ILS 8 right. ILS 8 right. Excuse me while I get this chart pulled up. Look at that chart. And we will assume... that we're transitioning to that approach from... Let's see, what are our choices? Let's see, while I try and figure out which one I care about, what I'm looking for is... Um, actually see any of these points listed on this chart. Uh, so instead we're going to ignore that uh, approach transition and we're going to go look at the legs page. Alright, so the Anora 3A arrival. Let's look at that show chart overlay using the charts desktop app on my other display which you can't see but it's very very helpful. Uh, Anora, and basically to Rokil via Serum. So, Anora, Serum, Param, next ought to be Rokil, uh, yep, and then MIQ, which is all correct, and then yes, our approach transition will be Begin. So that's the arrival put in. Should have a more accurate top of descent calculation now. And clearly, it's not recalculating. I hate that it jumps back to the first page. Why does it do that? That makes no sense. Uh, anyways, we'll just go ahead and add an over 5,000 constraint for Mick because it's showing us this weird calculated view below 5,000 feet and we certainly don't need that to happen. Uh, anyways, we'll go ahead and uh, when we cross top of descent, we'll start our descent for uh, 5,000 feet and then we'll pick up the ILS onto 8 right in Munich and see if we can put the plane on the ground after our long haul flight, which so far has actually gone uh, reasonably well. Uh, beyond my frame rate being terrible, which uh, the plane is not helping. The plane does have some frame rate issues, but I'm going to blame these clouds. Uh, they're certainly not helping. But let's see. Elapsed time on the status synoptic right now would show as 7 hours 10 minutes. So anyway, we'll start our descent shortly, and I'll come back when we're on final.
Welcome back. We are turning final onto runway eight right into Munich. And it is so far uh, not doing the best job of flying this approach. But that has kind of been the experience. The autopilot, lateral navigation, and vertical navigation are just, they need some tuning. They're not quite there yet. We'll go ahead and take flat five. We'll bring the speed back. We'll take flat ten. And we can take flat twenty. And we'll go outside, it's going to get a little bit loud, but we'll, uh, we'll watch the gear come down, see what that animation looks like. I've got no problem with that, it looks good to me. And now we're nose diving, because we're in level change. And, of course, I have missed the approach because I got distracted with the landing gear. And we blasted right through the localizer, but that's okay because the plane hasn't actually picked it up yet. Turn the bank angle all the way up, although it won't let us go to 25 degrees, so maybe uh, leaving it on auto is the better choice. We're still a little bit high. And the auto throttle is, uh, well, it's sluggish. It's having a very difficult time attaining the uh, commanded speed. And then, uh, if you'll watch, it's probably going to blow right through it. That would be my guess. And never mind that we're never going to catch the glide slope on this approach. So let's just pretend like this hasn't gone terribly wrong. And it'll be my aircraft. And yes, the uh, glide slope. Oh, there's departing traffic. That's good. It means I'm coming in from the wrong side. But, as you can see, that's runway 8 right right there, so why the uh, ILS thinks it's way, way, way high, I'm not sure. Some more departing traffic. We're in really good shape so far. This will not be what you would call a stable approach. This is a disaster. Flap 25. And continue to nosedive the plane, trying to get down to that runway without killing everybody on board. And it's just not going to happen. It's just not going to happen. We're going to try and make it happen. This is definitely the kind of approach you want. But this is kind of the problem with the FMC currently, like the FMC and the autopilot. Sink rate, sink rate, sink rate, one sink rate, 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 Let's, uh, yeah. Well, that was, uh, that was a fun Four exercise hundred. in futility. Let's, uh, rearm the auto throttle and hit the toga button. Bring the gear up. And we'll do a, uh, we'll do a go round. Climb 
climb back up to 5,000 and uh, turn this plane around and try and do that approach again. Now why? Oh, because I'm an idiot, that's why. Alright, so I'm going to cut this out, but we're going to loop back around to the runway again and give that another shot. Alright, we're going to turn around and land on 2-6 left, so runway 8 right, but it's other end. That way we're not fighting with uh, just traffic, or traffic global rather. Let's see, it's the uh, ND has some weird magenta lines drawn on it. Not sure why it thinks we're going to go way out there, but we're not going to. And we should uh, very shortly get proper ILS markers, and we have, or at least we've gotten the wide slope. Which I think uh, maybe I needed to manage the, uh, I've read the FCOM, you're not supposed to uh, have to manually tune the ILS or make sure that it tunes, but perhaps that would have helped us. It's caught the localizer, it says, even though it doesn't show the localizer, which is impressive, I guess. I don't know, there's definitely some questionable things. Ah, there's eight left in the distance. That looks much more reasonable. But we've lost the uh, ILS markers again. And our VREF is going to be 163 knots for flaps 25. Let's just go ahead and change that and go to flaps 30. Take flap 30. Well, we'll bring the speed back to 158 knots and take flap 30. And, uh, it's interesting that it's not. Come on. Alright. Definitely some difficulties with it tuning that ILS. Take the landing gear. Somehow we're flying into low visibility that we can't see, but that's just X-plane default-ish weather for you. It's uh, not very good. There's certainly not visibility problems. Not sure why we have this haze. Well, visibility is five miles, so. Perhaps it is somewhat limited, but it's certainly not that foggy, I would think. Anyways, we've very nearly made it down. We could do an auto land, but that would be boring. Let's see if I can actually land the uh, 747 without crashing it, which my... Uh, few landings I've done in this have all been uh, less than spectacular, shall we say. Also, the fact that there's not... Typically in a Boeing, when you hit the uh, disconnect button for the autopilot, an alarm sounds, and you hit it again, and the alarm stops. But that doesn't work that way in the SSG 747, which is somewhat annoying. Disconnect the autopilot, disconnect the auto throttle, and see we shouldn't we shouldn't actually get those warnings. I mean we should, but if we click it twice it shouldn't rearm it, it should shut the warning off. Because that's how you tell it that you're in control. This approach so far is much improved.
No, a little bit low. If we aren't careful with that, it's going to get very angry about the glide slope. I'm in no mood for the airplane 000. to be angry with me. I'm in a mood to be angry with the airplane. Because the, uh, the VNAV descent calculations were poor. Oh, there's some uh, traffic mobile flickering in front of us. Glide uh, slope. Yep, there we go. Glide slope. I've started ranting, and now we're Glide slow slope. and low. Glide slope. Yeah. Glide slope. Glide slope. It's going to be okay, everybody. Glide slope. It's going to be okay. So Peppies say we're fine, actually. Five hundred. Oh, and we get that lovely short final weather reload glide slope oh stop it glide slope glide slope 300 glide slope okay fair enough we're way slow glide slope we're falling out of the sky glide slope glide slope glide slope 200 now we're going to be high Very sluggish to respond, which I guess you know it is a one hundred. It is a very large airplane. This is not going to be pretty. Fifty, forty, thirty, twenty, ten. Floating all the way down the runway. the reversers. We'll go with manual braking. We'll bring the flaps in. Not, not the prettiest. Definitely has some bugs that need to be worked out. Definitely has some bugs. But there you go, we were able to fly ish from Atlanta to uh, Munich. Had to do a little more work than we should have to make all that work, I think. But hopefully, uh, hopefully they'll do some updates and, and this experience will get better. Uh, there's, if you've watched my side by side video or if you've looked at the forums, you know that there's a lot of negative feedback out there and you know what? A good chunk of that is uh, warranted. A good chunk of that is criticism that they have earned with this particular product. But uh, hopefully, and I think in the past SSG have done a good job of making their aircraft better. Hopefully the updates for this will be quick and good. But we'll just have to see don't have any way of knowing for sure. We'll go ahead and get rid of the landing lights, which unfortunately is easiest to do with the scroll wheel, which is probably my least favorite way to do it because I tend to hit things I didn't intend to hit. Let's see, I have no idea where we are in the airport. far away from everything. We'll just park up here at one of these uh, service hangars and call it good. Like I've said in the side-by-side uh, -side comparison video, uh, go watch that if you haven't already. Check that out. Um, I don't regret buying this. Um, I wouldn't go so far as to say that I recommend that you buy it, but I don't recommend buying it. And uh, yes, it has many flaws, 
I think everyone in the forums and whatnot have done a great job of making sure that SSG is aware of those flaws. And uh, in some cases, we've done too good a job. I hesitate to mention that sometimes when we uh, sometimes when we turn things into a flame war on the internet, a developer gets uh, discouraged and says, "You know what? I'm going to pull the product," and that doesn't help anybody. So I'm hoping that they are getting the feedback they need to make it better. It's supposed to have main gear steering. Let's see. Do we see... Yes, we do see some body gear steering there. It's nice. I don't know how that's supposed to be implemented, but it's nice that it's there. Uh, a commenter mentioned that they have a problem with the gear uh, animations, with it uh, extending and retracting, and I didn't see a problem with that, personally. Maybe I'm just blind, but I certainly didn't see a problem with it. We're actually just going to ruin somebody's day and just park right out here in the middle of nowhere. Because why not? It's not as though there's parking spots. We could park next to the A380 and show it how much prettier we are. Because that is uh, really not open for debate. The 747, any 747, is prettier than an A380 because A380s are ugly. We'll go ahead and drag our wing through that uh, A340 there. Please ignore the uh, just fly traffic with the wrong wheels or with the wheels animated as though they're in the air. Here is another A340 parked next to it. Possibly. Possibly. After we get done removing part of its tail with our wingtip. And we'll just skip down here to the next marked stand and take that. We can't lose the eye already. Shut the taxi light off. That's good. Good work there. Too aggressive on the brakes. Oh, this is not a this is not a parking spot. Oops. It is now. It is now. All right. And that is us. Come on, parking brake. That is us down in Munich. Let's see. Let's turn the APU generator on. We can use the engines. We can use the beacon. I could do a better job with the lights. Uh, anyway, turn the seatbelt signs off. Let everybody get up. And not get out because there's no gate for them to get out to. Anyways. Thank you so much for watching. This has been a fictional flight from Atlanta to Munich in the SSG 747-8 version 2. I hope that you enjoyed the video. I know that there's a lot of controversy around the airplane right now. I've tried to address some of that. I feel like I've done my part. Like I've said, I don't necessarily recommend that you buy it, but I'm not upset that I bought it. I'm going to kind of leave my thoughts at that. And, of course, my thoughts that are in the other video. So go check that out if you'd like. But for now, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time.